We've come back down to the woods today, got a little bit further than last time and have actually got into the woods. Found this lovely little clump of um, fungi coming out of a tree, a uh, fallen tree with nice moss behind it. Uh, and now we're going to move on to some of the lighting techniques that we can use, some of the tricks. So we could go through the same process as uh, we've done in the past, doing focus stacking, get uh, all that little clump beautifully in focus, and I probably will do that as well. But for simplicity, um, I'm keeping the aperture at f11 um, so that I've got a, a reasonable range of focus with it, just so I can demonstrate some of these uh, little light tricks. We're in the shade of the forest canopy and actually the natural lighting is really good so it's, it's uh, probably important to point out to start with that actually the first lighting is not a trick at all, it's just the, the natural ambient light uh, coming through uh, diffuse with all the leaves above so that's actually nice in its own right. I've improved the lighting slightly by bringing a, a bramble back out of the way and also my own safety so I'm not ripped to shreds every time so that's, uh, that's worth doing. Um, but I haven't broken it, I can put that back afterwards, which again makes it all nice and dark and secure for the, the little fungi doing their thing. Um, and I'm going to start with a really simple method, which is just bouncing the light around. So I've brought with me a big dish reflector. I've got a slightly smaller one of these that fits in my bag, but I've had to carry this separately. Just careful not to knock the camera over as I open it. And that gives me a nice big reflection option. If I can nip it in behind the camera there, I don't know whether you can see on your, your screen, but you'll see it in the photographs. I'll take one without the reflector. And I'm going to put the reflector in place. All that lovely light from the forest canopy is just filling in the backs of those mushrooms. Um, and that will give a lovely effect. Much uh, hated by photographers across the world is the gold side but if you wanted to give it a little bit of nice golden light behind you could always do that as well we'd come out on a really bright day and there was harsh shadows we could also use the reflector dish over the top of our subject and in this case i'm going to have to change my shutter speed because I've cut out. In fact, I'll take a picture with it like that so you can see it. And I'm going to have to drop the shutter down to get the same exposure. But that will cut, cut out any harsh shadows. So just with a simple, reasonably cost-effective, but very cost-effective reflector dish, you've got at least three or four different ways of doing things. And you could, of course, use a bit of foam board, a bit of cardboard, um, to cut the light out. It's just that these are really good at reflecting that different kinds of light. Next method we're going to look at is just using various different types of light. I've got a torch here, uh, filming on my phone so I can't use that. Most people have got a torch on their phone, but I've got um, a really cheap um, reasonably low power torch is actually really good for this. Got this lovely beast that my uh, that my uncle sent me that sends out ridiculous amounts of light. That I can put some really harsh uh, lighting on there. And I've also got my light tube that I um, usually use for product photography and things. A little bit like a lightsaber. And I can change the colour of that so I can put some purple hues on it. So let's let's start with that one to start with. So that's a simple. It's putting the light in different areas, bearing in mind that we can mask out the light later. So it's more about just picking up some of the features of the fungi with our light. Let's try underneath as well, which is, of course, completely unnatural. Um, but we're going for nice creative photography. And of course, I could change the color uh, to whatever I like on this, just as an example. Using our small point light, so this could be your, your phone. I could just experiment with some of the shadows here, maybe having light coming in from here. So I've got some interesting shadows behind the fungi. A little bit later on, we'll get to mask out putting some of the light through the top. So I could do some of that. I could just do similar to the reflector dish of 
balancing some of the light out, but it just casts the shadows a little bit differently. So that's worth having a little play. And if you do have a more powerful torch, it's almost like studio light. You can get it really harsh. I'm going to have to turn the shutter speed much, much faster. It looks almost like you've used a strobe. Cast some hard shadows. And there we are. So we've got a few different methods that we can use there. So we found another example with this lovely puffball here. I'm just going to move my dog here so slightly back. You're in the light. Again, with beautiful friendly uh, moss. I'm going to take a natural light photograph of that. Let's get right zoomed in on him. Lovely. <clears throat> and then I can just start playing about with the light. So let's um, let's start uh, with a head torch this time. So quite a, a pointed light. Some nice harsh shadows bringing out the textures. Because I can clone the light out later mask it out. I can get that really quite close and the effect will become harsher. This is a little bit like um, if anyone's familiar with the uh, egg experiment with studio lighting. Yeah, get your nose in, why not? We can light it in all different directions just to see the different effects that we can get. I might go for a bit of backlight there as well, get those fronds and moss, classic 45 degree angle get those effects with a more powerful torch we can obviously increase that effect but we do need to change the shutter speed considerably to keep the same effect so let's try from back there even more diffuse nice low light And we could, of course, also, I slightly blinded myself with that um, with that torch, uh, we could also introduce our um, light wand. This time I'm going to go for quite a sort of yellowish, goldish colour. Bring that in nice and close. Because I've got a base image, let's just make sure I've got another base image. I can light it in lots of different ways, including from behind. Let's just experiment with changing the colour of that. I'm going to amplify the green. There we go. Get a more kind of woodland ethereal effect. Cool. That should give us something to play with. I'm not going to lie, I've been quite nervous this week. Um, having uh, set my site's ambitions on doing some funky light painting, I've been casually looking around as I've been going around uh, to see what areas I might go to to make this video. And I've barely seen any fungi at all. Um, I was thinking, crikey, what, what happens if I get to the point that I can't find anything? I'm not entirely sure why um, it would be so different in Cornwall, because like looking on the forums, there's lots of sightings up and down the land, some amazing stuff coming out. Um, but just not seeing a huge amount here. I guess it's has to be climate driven, but um, quite why, I don't know. Uh, so I was quite nervous coming down here. Um, but a lot of it is just taking the time to tune in. Initially, I was like, there's nothing here either. What's going on? Just in this spot here, I've got puffballs on the ground. I've got these lovely, need to identify them later. Uh, another puffball over here, a few bits under the rocks. So sometimes it's just taking the time to kind of really uh, observe what's going on around you. 
what I have here is these lovely um, uh, fungi coming out of this dead branch. I've got some little baby ones and some bigger ones. Some of them are a little worse for wear, but I've picked these ones that are still in quite good condition and they're lovely and sort of sticky, gooey on top, uh, which is reflecting the light really nicely. So I've set up my composition using the branch as a nice little lead line. And um, I'm going to start um, by getting my base image and I'm going to use focus stacking uh, in this situation. So just so I can keep track, because I've got hundreds of pictures of fungi already, I'm going to start with a, a hand in front of my lens. Notice I'll put it on a two second timer because I still haven't replaced my cable release and that stops any camera shake. And then I'm going to take my first image on manual focus all the other settings are in manual as well. Um, for reference, I'm on a 50th of a second. 2.8 is the aperture and 100 ISO. So I've just focused on the very front uh, rim of the mushroom. And then my next shot, I'm going to focus ever so slightly further back so I can get the gills. And then I'm going to go for the stalk. And then I'm going to go to the front edge of his little mate. And the little mushroom is really quite ditty, so I don't think we're going to need more than two shots. For that one, so I'm going to go for his stalk and gills as well. Lovely. And then I'm just going to put my hand in front so that when I get back into Lightroom, I've got a good idea of which bits I want to turn into that focus stack. What I can do now is have a bit of fun with light painting. So it's quite a, a translucent little fellow this one. So I'm just gonna use my, my head torch to get enough light going through this one. I'm gonna start in this corner. Get in the torch really quite close to the mushroom, to the cap, so that the light penetrates through. I might try the Fandango torch that my uncle gave me as well. David Robinson photography. Although I'd be a bit nervous, it would just incinerate the mushroom, it's so powerful. But that would be interesting as a comparison. Uh, so you have put it on, there we go. trickier to get light just going through there. I wonder whether I can just push out the way. Let's get a bit of light going through this one. Good. Same with this one. Cool. And then finish it off with a hand so I know the series. Let's try it with a big torch. Whoa, it's too much. I think I was shaking the cap slightly there. In there. And finally, this one. Cool. Great stuff. Loads of funky photographs on our memory card. It's time to get back to the cabin, upload them onto the computer, and see what we can do in the digital darkroom. So here we have the base image that you've already seen focus stacked so that if I uh, zoom in on any part of the image here, you can see that our main subject is nicely in focus. 
So I'm going to use that and um, I've had a look through. These are the ones with the smaller head torch that we could put together. Um, but uh, I was surprised to find that the big torch actually illuminated the, um, uh, the, the gills really nicely coming through. Uh, and obviously the torch is so massive, we essentially have illuminated the entire mushroom in, in one go. Um, process is exactly the same, but just to make life a, a little bit easy for myself, I'm going to compose that base image, this image, um, and also this image of one of the um, background mushrooms that's out of focus, but nicely illuminated in the back there. Um, so I will just select all three of those, because otherwise we'd be selecting however many of these are, 15 or something. Got those three images. I'm going to right click, edit in, and then open as layers in Photoshop. And we see those three layers have now come through into Photoshop. Um, just in case there was any camera uh, shake, I'm going to highlight those three layers, go to edit and go down to auto align layers. I tend to keep it in auto because that does a really good job. Um, until it doesn't. Uh, I might just do lens correction at the same time. Let that run. Great stuff and it sorted out all that distortion for me as well that I can I can crop in later. Um, so if I switch on and off these layers um, we should be able to see that we've got our main cap highlighted, we've got the rear cap highlighted, um, and then we've got our base image as well. If I um, go to this uh, first image, or our base image, and we put a little mask on there, what we can then do, the, the mask we can imagine as, as white, if I take a brush and go to black, make my brush a bit smaller, hundreds kind of scale that's pretty good I've got my flow down to 70 uh, ish I'm going to drop the opacity down to kind of 80 smoothing at 30 just so that we can do this nice and gently whoops <laughs> do need to switch the other layer on though and um, what I can do then is just paint in the layer from behind this is a bit harsh at the moment but we can we can sort that out in a moment so I'm avoiding um, the top part of the cap because that is where the torch is and I'm just going to paint in all that lovely light good um, so that's that's our first cap done I'm going to um, mess around with that when it's back in Lightroom just to kind of balance it out a little bit but we're we're getting there um, I'm going to move that um, uh, rear layer up um, and um, I'm going to put another mask on that. So it's coming through at the moment, but I'm in black. So let's bump the size up for expedience. And I'm just going to get rid of all of that side of it. And you can see on, on this little mask, um, that layer is now kind of com completely hidden um, behind there. Good. <clears throat> so I've now come back to my top layer, operating in the mask. And again, with the black brush, I can then just paint in the nice glow in that background mushroom. Which again, we can balance out a bit. Back in Lightroom. Cool. A few edges to sort out here. So keeping my brush reasonably small, just going to drop the opacity down. Just going to see if I can sort out some of these edges a little bit good
cool. A little bit hasty. I'll take a bit more time, um, but you, you're hopefully getting the idea. I'm going to drop that back into Lightroom just by saving, and it should round trip back into Lightroom. Cool. Um, so we've round trip back into Lightroom. Uh, it's not looking um, it's not looking horrendous, uh, but we can tidy it up a little bit. The first thing for that geometry, um, and because this is for the video, is I can drop it to 16.9 and do a bit of recomposition. So we'll go into the photo frame nicely. Um, some of these areas are looking a little bit burnt out to me, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a radial gradient over the cap itself. I'll drop that down a little bit actually, which allows me to drop the exposure slightly, just make it a bit more glowy and less burnt outy. Drop the highlights ever so slightly, not too much though. Cool, I think that just helps with the kind of general glow. There are a couple of burnt out bits which I might try um, uh, using a, a brush. And I'm going to put that on burn to darken it. Nice and small. Make sure auto mask is on. Just see if I can kind of blend those really highlighted bits in a little bit. Yeah, that's a bit better. And then I might do um, final little touches like turning the um, uh, texture up ever so slightly. It's looking quite good. Uh, I think the overall contrast I might actually reduce because we've put images together which is up the up the contrast. I'm going to reduce that slightly. And then just to finish with, put a little light vignette on it. Now my feeling is what's um, what's unbalancing this is the top of this cap because actually if that was glowing up that would be much darker on top. Um, so again I'm going to take let's take a new brush. It's on auto mask. It's darkened. I can make sure that I get all this bright bit at the top. That lip. Couldn't quite work out what was throwing me off there, but I think this is going to be it. And we'll just drop the exposure of that down, darken it down. Good. Let's make that even smaller and just remove all that fringing. Good, happy with that. We've got ourselves a glowing little mushroom.